Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to tell if you have a liquid line restriction problem on an air conditioning system. So we're going to be checking the refrigerant charge, but we're going to be reading the vapor saturated temperature, the liquid sat temp, the line temps, superheat, and subcooling, and we're going to be able to tell if we have that liquid line restriction problem that we think we have. So I'm going to take you in for an up-close image of all that. And I want to take this opportunity to let you know that we have our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning paperback and ebook available. And in here we have troubleshooting guides so that you can determine what the problem is on the air conditioning system. It may not just be an overcharge or an undercharge, you may have another problem. So I also go over preparation of a system for refrigerant, checking the charge, and troubleshooting. We also have our quick reference cards where we have that troubleshooting chart here and also charging methods as well. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take you in for an up close image. I'm gonna hook up my temp sensors. You see I have one hooked up already. It's just a bead K type temp sensor and I'm just gonna tape it right onto the line. You wanna make sure that these are out of the sun or you wanna put some uh, Armaflex, some insulation over top of them. And so that's hooked up. Now we're gonna hook up our, our blue vapor gauge to our large vapor line on our port right here. We wanna make sure our handles are shut first, just like this. These are all snug. These are at zero, so we should be good to go. So we do that fairly quickly. Now we'll go ahead and do this side. And now I'll go ahead and turn this on. Now I'm going to purge the air out of my yellow hose, so I'll first go ahead and shut it off and then I'm going to open up my blue hose and I'm going to purge the air out. I'm going to close this and then I'm going to open my, my red handle. So you want to make sure to not allow the refrigerant out, but you do want to make sure to not get the air in the system. So now that our air is purged out of the, the red hose and the blue hose, we're going to go ahead and turn the system on, and then we're going to monitor our saturated temperature on the low side. And, well, that's going to be done during the first few minutes, and then we're also going to check our superheat and subcooling. Before we turn the system on, it's very important to make sure that we have both of these handles shut because we don't want refrigerant traveling from one side of the system to the other side. Actually, it's going to be the high side is going to be going into the low pressure side, and then you're going to have liquid refrigerant going into the compressor. So it's very important to make sure that you have these handles both shut before you turn that system on. I'm also going to put a little bit more tape along this just to hold that temp sensor in place, and now I'm going to move you in for just a, a closer view of this stuff. Now we're going to turn this system on. So first thing we want to look at is our vapor saturated temperature. Now, first of all, this is an R22 system and our target subcooling on this system is eight degrees. So just because it's eight degrees of subcooling doesn't mean that we don't look at our vapor gauge. So right over here, R22, we have a pressure of 45 PSIG. We bring that into the green inner ring for R22 and we read 21 degrees saturated temperature. So that is very low, that's below 32 degrees, so that means that that evap coil, at least in the very front of the evap coil, at the very beginning, is going to be freezing. Now, right now we're reading a temperature on our, our liquid line, but I want to switch this over to our vapor line and see what we got there. So you see we have 67 degrees and about 21 degrees for our saturated temperature. Normally you let a system run for that has a TXV, because this, this system does have a thermostatic expansion valve, it does not have a fixed orifice. So normally you'd let a TXV system run for about five to 10 minutes before checking the charge. But when you assume that you have a, a low airflow problem or a, a low refrigerant charge or liquid line restriction, anytime that your vapor saturated temperature does not go up above 32 degrees, you're gonna need to check it within the first few minutes of runtime. So our total superheat right here is 66 66 degrees minus 21 degrees and we have 45 degrees of total superheat so if this system has a thermostatic expansion valve it should be holding the superheat right around say 10 to 14 degrees or maybe say 8 to 16 degrees around in there so the fact that we have such a high superheat 
that tells us that we're either low on refrigerant or we have a liquid lime restriction. So now we need to go over to our high side and this is how you tell the difference. If you have a normal to high subcooling, that's how you know that you have a liquid lime restriction. So right now you see that we are reading a saturated temperature. So it's about 97 degrees on the green inner ring. So remember that the outside ring is pressure. The green inner ring is your saturated temperature. So if you got 97 degrees minus your line temperature over here, that's subcooling, and you have 14 degrees of subcooling. So if this system was charged correctly, then that would make sense. If we had, say, eight degrees when we didn't have a liquid line restriction for our subcooling, but now we have, say, 14 degrees, then that would make sense. Uh, basically what's gonna happen is, there's gonna be more refrigerant in this outdoor unit than there will be in the evaporator coil. You're gonna have a higher subcooling with a liquid lime restriction with a TXV. So, uh, that's, that's how you do it. You, you gotta know that your, your subcooling is gonna be normal to high, and your superheat is going to be high, and your saturated temperature right here is low and it's below uh, freezing. So we would have 32 degrees for our freezing temperature. So we normally are gonna be above that. So we would normally be maybe say 34 degrees for a saturated temperature up to maybe 50 degrees, depending on the indoor heat load. I did check the airflow on the inside of the building and we do have the proper airflow and we have a very, very low Delta T. So uh, it's only about nine degrees or so for a Delta T and we would normally have maybe around 18 to 21 degree as our uh, temperature change in the building. So that's how you know it's a liquid lime restriction. Now we're gonna go inside, we're gonna determine what the liquid lime restriction is. Is it the filter dryer or is it the thermostatic expansion valve or is it the, the strainer that's right in front of the thermostatic expansion valve? So I'm gonna go ahead and take you in inside the building. Now you see we're on the inside of the building and we're measuring the temperature on the liquid line on both sides of the filter dryer. So we're trying to see if there's a temperature drop across the filter dryer, which would mean that there's a clog. And in this case, you can see that there is no issue. So our, our temperature is very close from one side to the other. If there was a restriction, you would have a much uh, lower temperature exiting the, the filter dryer. So we know that the filter dryer is not the problem and we know that there's no temperature drop across it, which means that there's no pressure drop across it. So that's not clogged. So now we need to determine if there's a problem with the strainer or the TXV. So to determine if the TXV is the problem, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this system off and we're gonna take the bulb and we're gonna put the bulb in hot water. And that's gonna tell us if we put it in hot water, if the, the superheat lowers and the vapor saturated temperature rises and that tells us that the the bulb charge is a little bit low but it's not all the way low uh, so not all the refrigerant has leaked out of the head to bulb assembly so you got to remember that the refrigerant that's in this head to bulb is different than the refrigerant that's in the system so if this line right here rubbed up against something and some of the the refrigerant leaked out uh, or it leaked out of the head then that could be the problem so that's an easy way to determine if the TXV is definitely the problem we're gonna do this, but I'm just gonna also tell you that if you have a liquid lime restriction problem, it's gonna usually be the filter dryer, the strainer, or the TXV. So you can just plan on replacing all of it. Anytime you have a system open, you're gonna replace this filter dryer anyway. So right under here, we should have the bulb, and we'll just cut this. So there's our, our bulb. So now I'm gonna fish this right here outside and I'm probably gonna come right through the bottom and then I'll have it, I'll show it down low here. So we just wanna go ahead and put this in our hot water and then we're gonna close this door again and then turn the system on and we'll check our charge again. So you see we have our bulb in our hot water and our temperature sensors in there reading right above 102 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and turn our air handler on now and we're gonna check the charge again and see if our superheat rises. We're getting ready to go ahead and turn this system on again and we'll see what happens with our superheat.
So we've got to give it a little bit of time and we'll see if our bulb in hot water is making any difference for our vapor saturated temperature right now. You see that we're actually high enough now, we're actually at 44 degrees. So before we were already down at 20, like 21 within that first 30 seconds or so and we kind of stayed around there. So you see our vapor saturated temperature is high now. So you gotta look at your, your pressure on your outer ring and it's uh, right about 72 and we bring that into the inner ring and you see that we're about 41 degrees saturated temperature. So we're gonna change our temperature measurement location and we're over to the vapor line. And you see we have right about 59 degrees. So 50, 59 minus 40 and we have about 19 degrees of superheat. So the superheat did lower already. So, so that's great. So that means that the TXV is definitely the problem. You see that we don't have say 10 degrees of superheat. Uh, that would be like if it was fully functioning and everything was good. Uh, now, if you did this and you put that bulb in hot water, you want to make sure that you don't leave the system running like that. You want to make sure that you definitely have superheat occurring. So if you have superheat, then you know that you have vapor refrigerant heading into the compressor and, and that the compressor will be safe. If you don't have any superheat, then you're going to have liquid refrigerant heading into the vapor compressor and it will damage it. So you still want to wait and we would still check this maybe after five, 10 minutes. You see our vapor uh, saturated temperature is, is lowering. So we're now at about 38 degrees and we're at about 58 here. So we have about 20 degrees of superheat. Let's just check the sub as well. The sub should have gone down a little bit if the bulb was the problem and we're now allowing more refrigerant into the evaporator coil. So this is just a confirmation method, by the way. It, it, you would still, if you had a liquid line restriction problem, you would still replace the filter dryer, the metering device, uh, such as the TXV, and the screeners. And usually the screeners come with the new TXV. They're just a little stainless steel screen. Um, let's just check our, our sub -coing. now. We have 95 degrees as our saturated temperature on the green inner ring, and we have 85 degrees here. So that means 10 degrees of sub -coing. So our sub -coing did lower because our TXV is allowing more refrigerant to go into the indoor evaporator coil. So that's it. That's a, our confirmation that our TXV is definitely the problem, and we're going to need to go ahead and replace that. If you're looking for more troubleshooting resources, check out our products. If you want to learn more about troubleshooting air conditioning systems, check out our book. And the book is written in layman's terms, so it's it's easy to understand, even if you're just coming into the trade and you're new. We take you through from the, the beginning, like how the system works with the refrigeration cycle, how to check the refrigerant charge, and then we move into the troubleshooting aspects. So there's some in there for just about everybody. You can check out our book and the quick reference cards over at our website at acservicetech.com. And we also have these products available over at amazon.com. You can also get our book as an ebook, and that's available over at Google Play and also at our website at acservicetech.com. If you want to learn more about what we do, check out facebook.com slash acservicetech. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.